agronomics, economics. How do we balance that all out? Join me and let's find out in this episode of Advancing Crop Nutrition. I'm Sherry Cook, and in this series, we'll be talking to farmers, advisors, and experts, and we're going to see how they're advancing crop nutrition. In our last episode, we talked with Mark and Ryan about applying fertilizer in the real world. Now we're here talking about getting your crops the right nutrients. In our last episode, we talked about a crop nutrition plan, right? And what that consists of and what that should look like. And today we're here on your farm and we're looking at one of your fields. And so what was the plan like when you were planning for this field last year? And how do you plan for this year? Yeah, so on this particular field, um, we, we did, um, so last fall, we did 250 pounds of micro essentials and we did 100 pounds of Aspire. And then the balance of our K came from potash. Um, and then we used a toolbar to apply 100 pounds of actual N via anhydrous. Um, and then spring at planting, we uh, used 1034-0 in zinc in fertile. And then in June, we top dressed this field with urea, AMS, and a nitrogen stabilizer. And what was the yield goal? 250 plus. We typically, this is one of our better fields, patent tiled, um, good drainage, good history of manure on it. So it's couple of years ago, multiple times we've hit 250 on this field. So you can push it a little bit more on this Yeah, so absolutely. We push it. Great plan, and what kind of results are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, we have, you know, really good looking crops out there right now. Um, I think we're very pleased with, with the progress. We have a nice deep green color in our corn. Um, so yeah, I think we're very satisfied. And this is some of the tallest corn around, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great fertilizer plan, good planting, yep. and good weather. Great weather, great weather. We had a stint of you know a couple of weeks of cold, wet weather, but I think the starter really helped pull the corn through that. For sure. And so we can have the best conditions and we can have the best products, but we still have to think about economics, right? Right. I yep. mean, fertilizer prices where they are, grain prices the way they are. How do you plan accordingly? Well, I got about a 20 year history of what I've done on each farm for input, so I kind of know my numbers and how much my cost of reduction is. And, you know, and using that past history, you kind of know what what you can afford to put out there and still have a return on that investment. ROI is super important. And so how do you factor in the performance fertilizer products into that, the Microessentials and the Aspire? There again, we're using premium products um, because we're trying to achieve premium results. We are in the business of producing bushels. Right. And sadly, that's where most people will begin to cut is on their fertilizer when it's the bushels that pay the bill. Right. So it's, it's, you gotta play a balancing act on that. And I would say fertilizer is the biggest piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. I mean, other things are, oh, are important as well, the seed and the you know chemistries and all that, but your fertilizer is your base. That's where yep. you start from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, I do look at it too as like a comprehensive program because when Ryan and I are visiting about our fertility plan in August, yeah, you can look at the price of corn or futures and different things like that, but until you've actually sold the commodities, you or your corn and beans, right. you haven't locked anything in and we don't always know what that's going to be. Right. And, and again, I mean, definitely a long game. And obviously we have, you know, Ryan has significant investments in different things like that. I mean, obviously from land to input costs, machinery, all of these different things that are here irregardless of the price of corn or beans. We've talked a lot about agronomics and economics. Here's Keith Byerly to explain more. There's a financial advantage for our growers in purchasing their crop nutrition in one package. Micro Essentials and the analysis that it provides often can't be duplicated by simply blending commodity fertilizers together. There's also over 20 years of mosaic small plot replicated research that helps us understand and find those yield advantages that go with micro essentials as well. So not only do we have the ability to create superior blends of products at a competitive cost point, but we also have the yield advantage over using commodity fertilizers. Any advice you would have for those other growers out there that would like to 
maybe step up their plan. So on that note, I would say not being afraid to try new things. You know, Ryan's a great example of that, of doing trials, doing on-farm trials. We should always be constantly learning and trying new things, and we're gonna have failures along the way or things that don't work, but we don't find out things that do work unless we try. I mean, we're doing two different trials pretty much every year for the last 10 years. We're trying something new. Well, thank you guys for your time and your input today. We sure appreciate you being on the show. Yes, Sherry, thanks for coming, and we look forward to seeing you next year when you stop back for the biological trial. Yes, <laughs> can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Sherry, I appreciate the time. Absolutely, thank you guys. Thank you for joining us on another episode. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tell a friend about the show. Keep up to date and be sure to subscribe to Advancing Crop Nutrition.